When Louis St. Pierre and Kathy Brosmer started dating six years ago, <laughs> they weren't looking for love. We were very content individuals when we met. It developed very slowly, actually. It was about three months, I think, before he gave me a real kiss. Years later, they're happy and committed, even though they have different interests. <laughs> Louis likes his woodworking shop. And Kathy enjoys playing music. <laughs> he likes his big screen TV. And she likes to read quietly. Hey, honey. And there's something else that makes their relationship different from the norm. I've been in my house for almost 35 years. And I've got it just the way I love it, right? And when I met Louis six years ago, he was in a house about a mile away. We kind of came up with this idea that, hey, we don't have to live together. And then I think it became this aha thing that we can just keep on living like this apart, living apart together. They've both been divorced before and learned from previous relationships. They knew that as much as they cherish their time together, they also appreciate their time alone. A growing number of Canadians are finding partners and deciding not to live in the same space. You can have a very good relationship and live apart. There are alternatives to that traditional living together. It's called living apart together or LAT. Louis and Kathy are so committed to their arrangement, Louis recently bought the house next door to Kathy in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. I'm working on my dissertation and it takes a lot of focus, a lot of concentration. So sometimes in the evenings, I'm gonna try and get something done. Now, uh, more often than not, I'll say, you need to go home because I can't focus with the distracting sounds. And because he's right next door, it's really super easy. He can go home for a couple of hours and then come back and give me a good night kiss. According to Statistics Canada, the number of couples choosing a LAT lifestyle is growing. Between 2006 and 2017, the percentage of couples claiming to be living apart together rose from six to 9%. And it's not just Canada. At Stockholm University in Sweden, Livia Ola, an associate professor of family demography, studies what kind of people are drawn to LAT relationships. So this freedom and to make up their own rules, that's what appealed to many people. And it seems that it uh, appears especially to women and particularly for single mothers. She also says it allows for more equity in roles, breaking down stereotypes. We do not have to follow the usual traditional gender roles. Uh, women doing uh, what they used to do, household work and uh, uh, other caring activities. So therefore, this is uh, appreciated by quite many. The largest group of Canadian couples living apart are 25 to 34 year olds, according to Stats Canada. In Vancouver, Heather McDonald met her partner when she was in her late 30s. They have been together now for more than three years. The benefits to living apart together is that you really make a point of spending time with each other. You're not going to fight over the day to day. Your socks are on the floor. You didn't put the dishes away, but you're going to really enjoy each other's company. You just make a point of every time you're together being special because you don't have a lot of it. Oh, those are nice, but I thought they were blue. Oh yeah, those are different. She's also a single mother of a 14-year-old son, and her partner Jordan has sons living at home as well. So we're really lucky because I live right here, and Jordan lives about a block away, just over that way. I think one of my biggest concerns is that I naturally take on a mother role, and my stepkids have a mother and a father. They don't need a stepmom in the background nagging them. My job is to be a support for them, someone they can trust, someone, another positive adult in their life. And so by not living together, you avoid the conflict of the day-to-day -day parenting and you can just enjoy the, your, the company of your stepkids. Some might view this arrangement as lacking in commitment, but recently Heather and Jordan publicly recognized their devotion to each other. It was really important for me to have a wedding. You know, when you don't live together and you're not planning on having children together, it was important for me to seal that commitment and have something that him and I shared. 
Livia says there are economic reasons why some people are attracted to LAT, like keeping assets separate. Men who live in a LAT relationship, they are more likely to own their housing. We used to think that maybe this is the women, that they are so much afraid of losing what they have. But here we seem to have that actually a lot of men, they do not want to lose their apartment either, <laughs> or their dwelling either. There are a lot of pluses to living apart together, but there are also some downsides. One of them is benefits, and we're not talking fringe. Kathy isn't eligible for Louis' extended medical benefits, and she feels the current system is discriminatory. If we were living apart but married, his benefits would cover me. And if we were living together but unmarried, his benefits would cover me. In this case, they don't, just because he's in the house next door. I can see it from the insurance company's point of view that there could be more potential for fraud and that sort of thing. But it's still, the only difference between a cohabitating couple and us is address. We don't share an address. And to me, that's, there's discrimination there. It's one of the reasons why the research people like Livia do is important. It seeks to understand why people choose to live apart and for how long. It gives policymakers a better understanding of what modern day relationships look like and how to adapt. And the pandemic may be increasing the number of people attracted to this kind of lifestyle. Natasha Sharma is a relationship expert. Why or how could living apart together be good for our relationship? We've been in jail for two years, <laughs> right? I mean, like, we have. And we've been seeing the same faces day in and day out. You know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I have two kids, and I think a lot of people will relate to, you can get too much of a good thing. You really can. Too much of anything, even a good thing, is too much. Some might question the commitment of couples who are not together all the time because it's not what society has taught us. We've been raised and shaped in this archetype. Says this is wrong, this is not normal, this is dangerous, you know, to the relationship. But um, I think what we're seeing is that the reality of humans and how we are, for the most part, may not fit that model, at least not 100% of the time. What we need to do is step back from this indoctrination of the way we think things should look. They shouldn't look any way. They need to be reflective of our individual needs and our individual desires and our individual lifestyles and personas. Kathy says it gives her the freedom to live her life her way. We might have been able to compromise and do all that you need to do um, and live together. And I, it, we would maybe still be happily together now, but it would have had more tension. And Louis is quick to point out that you can't really judge the commitment in a relationship on the basis of whether two people live together or not. We're together because we really want to be together. So I think that makes it better for us because we want to be together and we have a lot of fun together as a consequence. I think it's just a, a better relationship.